I'm doing a 15 minute session for a client. And so I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here. The goals are very short and then I'm gonna get started. Okay. So it says, self love explored within me. So the goals are to explore self love within me. All right. This is really complicated. You actually write it self love explored within me. And when I read that, I'm just, I'm still translating the vibration of it, okay? It's almost like you're not allowing yourself to explore self-love within yourself. It's like some part of you is stopping you, like not allowing you and then blaming you blaming yourself. It, it's, it's kind of like this. this is what's coming to me right now. But I'm going to chill out and get into the journey state here. And let's see what we discover, okay? Wow. Okay. I'm, in, I'm instantly, I'm so many things are happening here. I can't speak through every single thing. <sighs> Let's just say I'm watching and simultaneously experiencing going in a very smooth elevator, very quickly downward. I'm also being shown a part of you that is crying out for help. And you're just like pushed and 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 pushed, and pushed, and pushed into the back into like a dirty corner it makes me think of the Kafka story about the cockroach. And it's all vague to me now, but I want to say it's about a boy who is slowly but surely transforming into something nobody wants. Everybody's disgusted by it. And he's becoming a cockroach. He literally becomes a cockroach and becomes so lonely and dirty and, and like dying in this suffocating, disconnected way. It's like turning into some dusty old cockroach that nobody wants. And like I'm coughing because it's like basement dust or attic dust. It's it's like you don't want to put your bare hands on the dust because then you have dust on your hands. Like, I don't want dust on my hands. I don't want to touch you. You're dusty. That's that's what the energy is like. And even as I'm saying this, it's erratic. It's like um, electrocuting. So even I feel like I'm just like... Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> it just like keeps doing that. It keeps feeling like, ugh, ugh, gross, ugh, yuck, erratic, electric, I'm getting electrocuted now, uh, am I the gross one, am I the cockroach, am I disgusting? So it's not even able to cope or love yourself because you yourself feel that you are a gross, dirty cockroach. But you don't at the same time. But you don't know how to stop feeling like a gross, dirty cockroach and so this is really conflicting. Because you know you're not that. But yet you can't stop that from being your feelings. It's very, very saturated. Very saturated. Now we're, we, well, we got some work to do here. Okay. Oh, something, there's a real massive projection issue here in the throat. Third eye is really under a lot of pressure. I mean, you don't know how to cope with being yourself. Like, you straight up can't cope with being yourself. This is, this wants to shatter. Your third eye wants to shatter. And it spins. And it's like, um, you know, like, uh, pepper. And it's in one of those containers where you get to crack the pepper. And then there's the pepper, you know. It's like your third eye, I keep turning it and I hear it cracking, but it's breaking itself. It's crunching itself into pieces. It's like glass that is chunking into pieces. 
It's like, man, you're way too hard on yourself. Why are you so hard on yourself? You're a you you're a very flexible rubber band, but you're also a dried out non-flexible and if it stretches just a little bit, you're going to you're going to crack and break right down the center. So are you a flexible rubber band or are you completely fragile, breakable, old, dried out rubber band? Which one are you? You haven't decided, so you're in limbo right now. You're straight up in limbo. And as in limbo, you're leaning towards a self-destructive energy because it's easier to punish yourself than to love yourself. So much, like, my gosh. You have, like, some of the most extraordinary throat jams I think I've ever run into. Like, it's so surreal. Like, it's like, wah, 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 throat jam. So I'm just, I'm just exploring this right now. It's, it's exciting. Like, there's so much you can do to, to help you feel better. Which means you're going to feel a lot better after this. <laughs> it's going to give you a lot to work with. So glad we're doing this session here. Okay, this is going to get a bit gruesome. Ah, it's like, like barf, but barf doesn't come out because it's all dry and it's like a, I don't know, a goiter or something. Your throat's like a goiter and it's pulsating and it's gross and it's ugly and it's disgusting. So you have a lot of that going on in here. There's also a very pretty silver dagger that is just like straight up into your third eye, really tight. So the blood can't actually pour out. It's just like sealing it. So it's like the blood's in the inside, but it's not quite. Very pretty looking silver dagger. Like it's ornamental and everything, but it's obviously gruesome at the same time. Because it's stabbed into your third eye. It's like stabbed right into your head, but it's like tight. So we don't lose any blood or anything. It's, it's it, That's literally what the scene is. I ask you if you did this. Did you do that? Are you... It, this is really sad because you have a part of yourself that is trying to cut out your third eye. You're trying to remove it and make it go away. I, I say it's okay to slow down. It's okay to slow way down. Because is that what you actually want to do? Or is that the pain just ripping you apart and torturing you? The pain now becomes its own consciousness that is also your consciousness. It's like you can't separate yourself from the pain. Otherwise, now you have you plus the pain you. And the pain you is one of the worst, torturous, nightmarish versions of yourself you could have. You need to just be the pain you and don't separate that consciousness. Just be the pain, okay? Don't try to just... <sighs> because once you... It's like... <sighs> I'm going to just explain this side. It's just one side of this. But when we're going through a really hard time, it's really hard to cope with and understand all the dynamics of what we're going through. So it's easy to kind of separate ourselves from a lot of that in order to just try to find some, some version of stability. Once we separate ourselves from that, that becomes still a living being. Like it's got a mind of its own. And you'll start to find yourself being punished by yourself because it's unreconciled pain. And you can't get rid of it. It will keep knocking on your door with a vicious vengeance of killing you. So you have to be okay with your pain. It don't hurt yourself, all right? Because that's not what you actually want to do. And nobody wants to hurt you either. And anybody who does, you just let that go, right? Because you need to be in a safe place surrounded by love. You got, you got some definite, um, man, there's so much stuff going on here.
Like, there's a lot of tragedy. I mean, there's this war, scenes of war. I mean, it's like straight up cutting your ears off. Like, a, isn't that Van Gogh that cuts his ears off? Somebody does. Some kind of artist does. But I see you cutting your earlobes off. It's like you don't want to hear something. And at the same time, you're screaming. And is it that you don't want to hear your own internal screaming? Or you don't want to hear what somebody else has to say? The thing is, is why are you, why are you making it such an extreme experience? It's literally just conversation. Conversation is not meant to be like a bomb blowing up and you separating yourself and now hurting yourself. So we need to get, figure out where this is all coming from. Because this has to start getting reconciled. This is hardcore here. I'm just putting my hands over your heart like I'm just doing this because I'm just helping to support your heart right now, okay? Because I'm going to have to rewrite the book. <laughs> that That's a song, you know. <laughs> I think there's like, I swear to God, there's a couple songs that, that have some kind of lyric about rewriting a book. <laughs> we got to rewrite the book here. <laughs> Rewrite the book of your cockroach self because that's not your story, okay? You have to stop saying that's your story. You're saying that's your story. But you also feel like you should die and you deserve to die. Like you, That's also in your story. See, that's not true either. So you're up against this battle with yourself. Which is the hardest battle anybody could ever be in. It's like, physical war is pretty straightforward, but the war inside yourself? Oh my god, where do you even begin with that? There's so many faces, so many personalities. So many stories, self-destructive pathways. So much manipulation inside yourself. It is getting softer, okay? You literally don't know how to, to, to do, you don't know what to do. I say start by really taking a look at what is true. What do you feel like right now? If you were to describe out loud to yourself, how do you, how you feel? You need to say openly, honestly, my story feels like this. I feel like this right now. That's how I honestly feel as a human being. Okay. So we got to explore. You have to be authentically honest about how you feel. I You can say things like, you know, I feel stupid. I used to feel stupid because of this. It's okay. I know that's called negative self-talk, but this is not negative self-talk. This is you trying to understand the voices inside yourself. This is you trying to understand the story you created. So you have to choose to hear what the story is that you created inside yourself. So you have to hear that. You have to put that outside of yourself. You have to hear that, okay? And once you hear what the story is, because you're choosing to have an open, honest conversation with yourself, now you can rewrite the story, okay? Now, is it true that you're a gross, disgusting cockroach? You can say, yes, I am. Okay, well, why are you? I am because this, this, this makes me a gross cockroach. Okay, well then, it's okay to feel that way. We're human. Like, you know how many times I felt gross? Like, I wanted to barf and then get really small and hide under a rock? Like, I wanted to just disappear. I wanted to not exist. That's what it feels like to be human. Okay? So... We, you can't separate yourself from that pain. You have to transmute it from inside yourself, okay? So we're gonna ha you're gonna have to start to talk to yourself out loud about what are the stories. And it's okay to be honest about it. It's not negative self-talk. This is called therapy here. This is called, I feel this way, okay? 
well, why do I feel this way? Um, is this way correct? I feel this way. Yes, because of this. Well, no, because of this. All right, so you're going to have to have a conversation. Like, you're going to have to get to know the many sides of what each feeling is about, okay? Yeah, you, you don't, you have a, like a rampant wild bad guy <laughs> that doesn't want you to actually be able to translate the truth. It doesn't want you to be able to access and translate the truth because it wants you to be suppressed. It wants you to stab your third eye. It wants you to do this stuff to hurt yourself. Because it's it's the pain. It that that right there is the pain just running rampant here, getting to control the whole situation. This is transmutable. very sticky it's full of like a million conversations that have been buzzing around your head for I don't know how long but it's like a million bees that are bzzz, and they're all viciously ready to sting they're all uncomfortable they're all kind of full of anxiety they're all uncertain they don't know how to just be safe bzzz, and they're all just swarming around each other like at any moment million bee stings So I'm literally just time out on the bees here. We're going to just drop them like flies, okay? They need to go into a time room. <sighs> you cry because they're all parts of you. Every bee, uh, like a million bees, every single one is a part of you. They say, how are you going to, what's your plan here? How are you going to resolve this? Like you're picking it up, like they're huge. It's like a bee, like it's a big bee. Like, and it's a round ball. It's pretty cute actually. It's really furry. Like I want to pet it, but it has a really big stinger as well. Black and yellow. And you're just, you're looking at one of them right now. And you see yourself in the, the eyes of it. Your instant reaction is to eat it, actually, just to swallow it back into yourself. But it's not correct. It's not what you, you do. It's not the right approach. It's, it's like you want it to go away, you want to make it all better, but you can't seem to connect with the method for how to do that. So you're trying things, but it's not, it's not actually the most authentic way to transmute this. This bee is getting really flippin' It's uh, turning into something very scary, okay? And you don't know what to do. And you feel like very hopeless, helpless right now. And all the bees are starting to come alive. And they're starting to want to attack you because you can't solve the problem. You're the problem. You're the stupid one. You're the messed up one. And they're full of really bad energy, okay? So I'm just timing it out. Again. And they're all falling back to the ground. I say, what are you going to do about this? So when you don't know what to do, what you do is just put them in a box and then hand them to the angels. That's all you do. You need to have some inner silence, inner peace, and these parts of you will return in time through experiences in life. When you're starting to regain yourself, they will start to return and you can regain them one at a time. 
but a million angry bees trying to figure out that it let, let's just start with just removing them for now so you can just work with what you're working with you can start to nurture yourself without all that noise and threat you feel bad because you're letting them go like you don't want that for them. I say that, that that's not understanding how energy works and infinite time. That's you holding on to human perceptions of things. If you didn't see these selves for a million years, that would be divine. Because there is no such thing as a million years. Just let them go. And know that they'll return to you in time. Like whatever that is. And ask your higher self for guidance. You feel you're you're already coming back to yourself. It's you're already full coming back to yourself like big time. You kind of jetted a, a I mean a huge part of you jetted because that pain was just a tyrannical nightmare of million scary bumblebees and psychosis. Like we get that energy out, that chaos out. We'll just let that transmute in its own time. So now you can access yourself. And you have energy consciousness that is coming back to you because it was just too painful in there. You didn't know how to cope or deal with it. So now you're starting to feel like yourself again. All these bees can transmute instantaneously and be back to you tomorrow. But as of right now, the best I can tell you is they, you need separation from that. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to say that and then regain yourself. That is fine. Okay, that's it. <laughs> there you go. That That is a really good step in the right direction for you. And the goiter thing is like totally subsided. The knife has disappeared. The grinding third eye disappeared. You're starting, you're, you've returned to yourself. Starting to regain your balance. You're definitely not a cockroach, a dirty, gross cockroach. You're regaining your balance. All that threat and that sound has been put, put over there. So you don't need that, okay? Just be back to you, okay? But you really need to figure out what your trigger switch is. Like, what is it that you don't want to hear? You need to write down, what are some things that I don't want to hear? But, and what are some things that I tell myself that isn't really kind to me either? And how do I really feel about myself? Do I love myself? It's okay to go down the pathway of no and the pathway of yes. Because you need to explore the many answers to that question. Because you're going to have to find out who you are. It, you have to find out who you are. You're like a TV with a thousand television shows going on and you don't know which one is you. You haven't decided which one is you. But just turn all the TV off and now you'll find out who you are. And you'll have to find figure out what I mean by this. But this is a metaphor for what's going on inside yourself and what's creating this, okay? Okay. You're going to feel a, a, you're going to feel better, all right? Give this just, you know, you might feel better instantly better. <laughs> I would think you would feel instantly better, but sometimes between the energy world and then the etheric and the physical, like it just it might take a day, it might take a couple days. But you're going to get there and you're going to have peace of mind and you're going to be able to breathe and you're going to be able to, f to figure it out and you're going to have a fresh start with fresh material, okay? <laughs> you're going to be okay. You really will. All right. Thank you so much for this experience. For those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all so much and have a great day.